Sup? Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me we have some more RPG horror stories. Do you know why the channel is also called Tales Tomorrow? It's actually really easy. It's not just tales to me that I find through RPG horror stories and get through email submissions. It's also because of this. I have a tale. Tail tomorrow. See? Anyway, enough of me shaking my ass on camera. Let's get some RPG horror stories for today. Trying to intimidate the beer. This isn't much of a horror story, much more like a funny one. I keep it short for maximum entertainment. A few years ago, I DM'd a 5e homebrew with more of a grown up theme. More intrigue and investigation than combat and explosions. Characters are me, DM, Rogue in a land where elves are kill on sight, this half-elf is in search of her elven mother while trying to survive herself, Wizard, this half-orc immigrant who came from a heavily religious land, was trained as a wizard by a voodoo witch, now wants to continue his training in a formal academy. However, this academy had escalated conflict with religious temples, and this wizard's loyalties are about to be tested. Bard, a noble. Now, this bard was feeling a bit shallow in comparison to the other two players and wanted to shine a little in social situations where his persuasion proficiency would be key. I threw plenty of situations for him to solve with persuasion and every time I would ask what sort of persuasive thing he was saying, he would always threaten the person being interacted with using his noble status, so I'd always go with roll intimidate. This went on for some time. So one day, party is investigating the ruins of a very old monastery that used to brew beer as an economic activity. In the room where beer was stored, they get face to face with a beer elemental. That is, a water elemental that felt comfortable in the cellar of these ruins and ended up getting mixed up with a beer there. That sounds like a perfect dwarf adventure. Go down to the deep dwarf mines to recover ancient rare beer and you have to fight a beer elemental. That sounds dope. I love that. Now, party figures out that Mr. Beer Ellie was fuming with rage as he wanted a way back to his home plane the elemental plane of water, and in parallel the party was gearing up to eventually storm the batty hideout, where there were magical secrets, those sort of secrets that would involve helping an elemental go back to their home plane. I explicitly tell this to the party that they can't enlist the help of Mr. Ellie to storm the place so they can ensure a way for him to go back home. All you have to do is say the words. Party, okay bard, this is your thing. Ahem, <clears throat> if you don't help us storm the place, We'll make sure you never go back to your home plane. DM flips the table. I don't know, man. I feel like something was read off. Maybe the players think that you have to intimidate everybody. Or, you know, there is moments sometimes where players feel like they misread the situation and they think they need to intimidate everything and everybody to basically be in their control and be in their demand and stuff. I don't know. I luckily have players that focus on persuading before they go for intimidation. They'll try to intimidate somebody who is clearly a threat, obviously, right? To maybe stand down and make him to succumb or to stop doing what they're doing go on this tirade, path of destruction. But most of the time, they'll be more likely to persuade somebody, unless they're like their nemesis or something. Then that'd be a whole other story. But interesting, a beer elemental. I need to use that for my games in the future. A dwarven adventure to recover the ancient coveted beer. Fighting beer elementals. Oh my god, I need to talk to Micah about this. Micah needs to hear about this. He would love this concept. Anyway, I'm gonna get to the next story for today, but oh my god, that's exciting. Session zeros are important, apparently. Been scrolling this sub for a while now, decided to add my own little story. Although it's not exactly a horror story, more like a disappointment story. I'm pretty new to D&D, and like many others, I decided I want to give it a shot after playing Baldur's Gate 3. Always wanted to play, don't really have friends that would be interested, so my socially anxious ass hopped on Roll20 to find a beginner friendly online game to join. I responded to a couple of listings, but only ever got a response from one of them, the one with the most interesting premise and setting. We're all fey, pretending to be human, infiltrating the royal court of a kingdom that has banned all magic and magic beings, with the goal to bring said magic into the kingdom, through means that were up to us to decide, aka friendly negotiations or chaos and destruction. We use D&D 5e, role for each subspecies of fey we'd play, all of them homebrew, and our assigned job at court. We never ended up having a session zero. If you're playing with your own group that you really know really well, you could probably skip a lot of the session zero stuff, but if you're playing with random players that you don't know that well, 
session zeros are very important for various reasons. One, you can discuss what the kind of topic the campaign is going to cover, and what sort of theme is going to be, whether it's going to be grim dark, more lighthearted, more serious, more dramatic, more, I don't know, really extra edgy and stuff. You can discuss about the sort of edgy themes you may want to cover as a DM, or players could be like, hey, is this okay? Is that okay? Is it okay if my character is extra edgy? Is it okay if my character is extra broody and stuff? You know, that sort of thing. Two, it's also important to talk about like things like, I don't know, maybe divvy out consent forms, make sure everybody's cool with it. You know, what's a res don'ts? Do you, like, are you afraid of spiders, claustrophobia, dismemberment, things like that? Check to see if players have a specific phobia or specific things that maybe they're not comfortable having in the game or in a session and stuff that maybe could be toned down a little bit low. Like, let's say, for example, a player has a phobia of dismemberment or something like that. Maybe tone down any time this sort of dismemberment that happens in game. I actually know somebody that has a really bad thing against, like, body dismemberment and mutilations they're not really comfortable with that sort of themes and it's just kind of a, a, a squeak for them you know but if the dm knows the sort of things they know what needs to be toned down and what's okay to just have it as is and three it allows the party to kind of vibe with each other and kind of figure out each other out before anything and maybe figure out who's going to be what character if they're going to have certain dynamics what sort of things they want to do as characters it's like a pre-session before the session where you understand what your character is going to be what the themes are going to be and everybody agrees and disagrees on certain things that are going to be in a game and then now you have this full understanding and the vibe and then you can start session one fully understanding and fully within that vibe that you created it's kind of important to have especially with people that you don't know if it's somebody you know and you're cool with just whatever themes and you're comfortable with friends and you know each other what each other like and dislike and stuff like that then just roll with it but otherwise session zero is pretty important to have especially with people that you don't know that well i decided to make my pc a bit of a happy-go-lucky airhead and i wanted to go with a stereotypical lone wolf introvert haven't heard enough horror stories, I didn't want to be one of those players for my first ever D&D game, despite being very introverted and quiet myself. I wanted to at least try. I just wanted to tag along with the rest of the group and told the DM from the start that I like to stay in the background, so I could go with the flow, let the other more experienced players take the lead, warm up to the whole thing. She agreed, and gave my character sheet her stamp of approval. My fae was a dryad circle of the land druid, never got the subclass, we didn't even level up once over the course of multiple sessions, we switched out of birth with a noble child, so they grew up among royals, having to hide their identity in fear of prosecution, once the magical features started emerging as they got older. They were given the task by a mysterious someone at court to welcome these other fae, the other players, who would be coming in to infiltrate the place, and my PC was happy to finally meet others of her kind. And this is where the disappointment starts. Every single one of them was a loner, with no motivation whatever to actually bring magic back to the kingdom. We had the cannibalistic edgy rogue, who was honestly the most interesting player, the introverted artist ranger, who would rather talk to her animals than anyone else in the group. In such a mumbling in-character voice, I had trouble understanding what she was trying to say half the time, and the guy with literally no personality whatsoever. He was just there. Try to stick with the plot, but I'm pretty sure he lost interest pretty early on. And that's partial where you have a session zero, or at least some sort of a sit down, right? Because you don't want everybody just to be a loner that just wants to be by themselves all the time, introverted, because then you can never get the party to interact together. Because everybody got to be this lone, edgy, broody kind of character that just by himself or somebody that's just a, a personality of a plank of wood. And I have this situation, this really awkward situation where everybody thinks, oh, my character is so cool. I hope the other PCs interact with me. But because they're such a loner, they never do. And the one introverted player, the OP, is stuck basically in this group of loners that also want to wait for everybody else to interact with their characters instead of them reaching out first. It just creates a, such a mess. That's why session zeros are really important. To let the players know that, hey, you don't have to make your character a loner. You can be pretty sociable and friendly because that's kind of the whole point of playing D&D. It's a cooperative nature. If everybody's just playing single player adventures, you might as well just, I don't know, go play Baldur's Gate single player. And that's it. You probably have way better experience there than playing single player at a TTRPG table. My PC struggles so hard to be the glue that keeps this group together, as they were desperate to make friends with them and they were just not interested. All of them were just doing their own crap, not really motivated to do what they came here for, and the DM didn't really help either, as she had no real plot hooks for us and the PCs were no help, not giving us anything to work with. In her words, it was a roleplay heavy game and the story was up for us to decide. 
our actions will be determining factors as to what happens. The few events that did happen had no consequences. There were no progression, and we stayed in the same location the whole time. For weeks or months of in-game time. Every time we thought we got something interesting, new information, it leads exactly nowhere. It felt like my class or stats didn't even matter. We were barely made to roll anything. There wasn't any combat, not even once. It was boring. Even roleplay heavy sessions should still have some semblance of combat. Because if you don't have combat, you're not rolling anything, then what's the point of doing stuff? Man, the DM is really flubbing in this one as well. Not only do they have everybody set up to basically be loners and one person trying their best as their introvert, the OP, but the DM is not giving any, any plot hooks or anything to work with, any sort of a lead to go on. They're waiting for players to do something because it's like they're waiting for some sort of a reaction kind of thing. They're waiting for players to do something and they can react with whatever. Or they just give them nothing. They give them some sort of a clue, leads nowhere, and that's it. I think the DM has no idea what's going on either, dude. Honestly, this game was failed from the start, I believe. This game was just genuinely failed from the start. What kind of broke me was an event, a ball, or banquet, or something, I can't remember, where other magical beings, roles from other kingdoms, were invited. So the entire premise became irrelevant after we found out that the king just upheld the previous king's laws and anti-magic rhetoric, but he's kind of mad about it himself and doesn't really care. So why were we here exactly? It's like all the stakes we had just thrown right out the window. We could have turned it to our faith forums right then and there and people would have just shrugged, which also made my entire PC's backstory about fearing the consequence of showing her true form obsolete, or at least that's what it felt like. DM sat us down after that session, telling us that we weren't going to continue the campaign as is, as none of our PCs seemed to have any motivation to do anything to work towards our goal, and nothing was happening. We talked about the issues all of us had with the game. I was pretty silent throughout most of the thing, just kind of piped in by the end, explaining that it was my first ever game, and being thrown into a lead position where I was expected to wrangle the rest of them put me in a really uncomfortable spot, which the DM did apologize for. The final verdict? No more loners in any future games, and clearer directions from the DM. We end up chatting some more, brainstorming ideas for a new campaign, all of which, not gonna lie, also sounded like they'd have similar problems, but I was down to give it another shot. In the end, the Discord server died, DM never brought up the new game, we were gonna attempt, and I eventually just left. End up joining another game after the initial disappointment wore off, one that's still ongoing. and very happy with it. The DM is obviously much more experienced and guides us in the right direction, still rolling with it when we end up hard derailing. The NPCs are so much more interesting and actually make it fun to interact with the world around. Turns out I'm not the best role player, but I do hope the group keeps me around for future games because I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Another game I joined is text-based, which made it possible for me to play a high charisma PC who has so much riz he already managed to seduce a god. The joys of not being put on a spot while in VC. Sorry for the long text wall, just never had the chance to share my frustration about the game with anyone. Have a good one. Now, hoping your games go well, for real. Like, sometimes, yeah, it can be a little rocky starting over something new, especially if the DM is not helping the situation. But looks like you found a different game after the initial disappointment, which I'm very happy for. Hope you enjoying the game and hope you're having a good time. At some point, the more you roleplay and stuff and kind of interact as the character and kind of just, I don't know, just not really take the whole thing seriously and have fun, you'll find yourself feeling more comfortable. Whenever I first tried to roleplay in a D&D game, it felt awkward and weird. I mean, I kind of had experience roleplaying in like a VR chat roleplay, but like not in a D&D game and it just felt weird. I didn't know, I didn't know how to get my footing. Now I can just go in there and play whatever character, just have fun. It takes a while, it takes a bit to like warm up to it and kind of like get used to it. But after a while, yeah, it should be fine. So just keep at it. Keep at it, have fun, and wish me the best for all your groups. Kind of sucks that the DM in this story sort of just took a backseat, complete and utter backseat, and then even retconned the whole world entirely by making it so like, magic is fine now, magical creatures are okay. Completely derailing the whole initial purpose for the campaign in the first place. But you know what, whatever. The game went bad, the DM realized it's not gonna work out, they ended it before it got any further, and it didn't get dragged out until it was completely and utterly dead. The DM just stopped it. Simple as that. And that's a good thing. If you know the game is not going well in general, and nobody's really interested or cooperating, and there's no continuity in the whole thing in the first place, then eh, screw it, just end it and start something new. Simple as that. Be honest with your players and tell them, listen, it's just not working out, but let's start it again. Let's just start it from the start or something. I don't know. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today.
I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.